everyone. Welcome to a special episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. I am your host, Lisa, and I'm here today with Captain Sandy Yon, and she is a star of Bravo's Below Deck Mediterranean and also a female captain of 150-foot mega yachts. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. First of all, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to sit down and talk with us. Uh, definitely a lot to cover. Just to start, could you just give us a little bit of background about the show Below Deck? For those that might not know what it's about, just kind of like an elevator pitch. So Below Deck is, uh, chronicles the lives of crew who live and reside aboard a super yacht. So it could be from 150 to 188. And the cameras follow them around and they catch everything. <laughs> Some things I don't even want to know about. Yeah, right? So kind of like a, a built-in tattletale yes, process. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, so that's incredible uh, to be on that type of show, uh, to captain the boat of that size. Obviously that doesn't happen overnight. Could you give us a little bit of your background? Like, how did you even get into the boating industry and where, where did you come from? What was that process like? Yeah, so I'm from this coast, uh, Bradenton, Florida. All right, originally. shout out Bradenton. Grew up on the water and we always water skied. So from yeah. the time I was really little, we had those orange light vests on and we were out there water skiing. Um, to the point where, you know, some life takes you in different directions oh, yeah. and I was on the wrong path and I had to answer, I answered an ad in the paper and I started cleaning boats. So detailing boats. Really? And then uh, the, I took care of this one guy's boat. He comes out, he goes, wow, you're doing such a great job. I'd love to hire you full time. And he started my career path. Wow. So from detailing boats, what's that next step? Did you get so into the So the next step was working for him full time. He taught me how to dock it. He okay. sent me to sea school. He sent me to engineering school and he invested in my career. And I worked, I believe in loyalty and so he was so loyal to me and invested in me that I stayed loyal to him and mm -hmm. I worked for that family for nine years. Wow. Okay, so how do you make that jump from It's interesting, into the super usually, yacht. and I always say to crew, it's great you're on a super yacht, but you really learn boat handling on smaller vessels like we have here. Uh huh. You know, these boats, you learn how to handle, like maneuver a vessel. When you're on a super yacht, you have thrusters, you have crew, you have a lot more help yeah, and right. it's so much easier. So I started, on a 67, we built a 92, so I jumped to that, and then that was sold, and I worked for a billionaire Arab, and he went from a 92 to a 157, so that was a big jump for wow, me. Wow, yeah. And the cool thing is, is I got to learn how, what it was like to build boats in a shipyard, because I went through the build on the 92 at Hatteras Yachts. Wow. And then we built the Trinity, and it was a custom, and I was the build captain from you know conception to completion. So I felt confident and comfortable because I went through that build process when I took the helm. Because to me, right. when you run a vessel, your boat handling skills come from small boats. When they're bigger, it's just, it's, they're less affected by wind mm -hmm. and current. Where these boats, it can I get mean, you. yeah, it's, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah, Not absolutely. that you don't own a super yacht, of course you do, but. <laughs> It's just easier. Right. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people right now, because there was such a big boom in the boating industry, a lot of people jumped into boating because of the pandemic, because it was something you could do with your family and be safe. We're to a point now where you're not just like kind of coming in and shopping what's on the floor. You're actually building your boat. So there are a lot of people that are getting to spec out their boat. And I would have to imagine that if you're ordering the boat or building the boat, you know like you said, you feel a lot more confident when you actually step behind the helm. Yes, and when you have someone like Marie Max behind you, you feel even more confident, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Because you got the pros. <laughs> so in my case, we hired a naval architect, we had a designer. When you're building super yachts, it's e what you want in your mind, right? So it's a lot longer process. It's a two year process. Now you guys, you're waiting for boats. What is the build time now when you come in and spec your boat out? Uh, it, it varies. Yeah. Six months, a year. Right. So, yeah, definitely yeah. longer. It's the anticipation, which is really <laughs> it's cool. exciting. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I know that we, uh, if, you, if you guys see any background noise or hear any background noise, see people walking around in the background, we just wrapped up a um, Women on Water class, which is something that we do across the country. So Marine Max has over 70 locations. Uh, we do classes like this. We do intro to boating. Uh, I know Captain Keith does a uh, navigation class as well. So it's a lot of basics, but it's something that we offer for, for free to people who are newer to the boating lifestyle. So you attended Women on Water today. 
I just kind of wanted to get your feedback. What did you think of the class? I think it's incredible. I think it's incredible because two things. What I love about Marine Max and Sea Ray, you know, and not a lot of people do this, from the, the time they walk through that door, the experience doesn't, after you sell them the boat, you give them this class, you, you, you're with them for the entire experience. The Women on Water for me was incredible because Captain Keith did an excellent job. Oh yeah. Um, he's very thorough because safety first, right? So there was a lot of safety in there. The other part is building the confidence for the women to say, hey, you can actually drive your own boat. You can get behind the helm. You can learn this. Mm -hmm. It's like driving a car. You know, we all had to learn how to parallel park. How many people failed that? Right, you know, still terrible they, at it sometimes. Right, all right. so <laughs> you practice, you practice. Same thing in a boat. And that, that's what I love about this class, what you guys are doing. And I'm, I'm really, I feel blessed to be a part of this because I, you know, I started on small boats. Yeah. All right. So anybody watching, you can start on a small boat, maybe become a captain of a 150 foot mega yacht. Yeah. It could happen. Yes, it can happen. Yes. And that's what's great about Bravo. You know, at first I was really reluctant to do the show because everybody in my industry was like, poo, 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 poo. Yeah. It's not good for your industry. It shows all the messes. And I'm like, it's great. It shows the messes because it shows the owners what captains go through. You know, it's a little amped up on our show because obviously these crew, it's not always about professionalism. Right. For, for some, it's about the party. But Bravo has reached so many, many, many people that, hey, there are careers in the marine industry. Yeah. This industry is incredible. I wasn't a college kid. I got kicked out of high school. The cool thing is, is the maritime industry, I feel, saved my life. There are so many great people in this industry. You know, you could be sales, you could be a charter broker, you could be a super yacht captain, mm -hmm. you know, but you all start, you, you got to start at the bottom. I didn't come in to become a super yacht captain. I washed boats. I got my diving certificate and then I started cleaning bottoms of boats. And I understood the mechanics of boating. Mm -hmm. So my confidence level as a woman felt like, wow, I knew this. You know what's interesting? So when yeah. I take on a vessel, the engineers, I walk straight in the engine room. I go, that's the water cooler, that's an alpha valve that cleans the fuel, that's your Hammond plant, that's the, you know, I let them know that I know. Because as a woman, for me, the challenges are, she doesn't know. It's like that I, assumption, just because totally, you're a woman. Totally, but I just say, because I my struggle is always with the engineer, because the captain and the engineer are the two people who you communicate every morning and every mm -hmm. afternoon. Like, without the engineer, the boat doesn't run, without the captain, the boat doesn't leave the dock. Right. right? So. Those two are very critical. Uh, obviously, I'm the engineer's boss, but at the same time, you have to have this camaraderie where it flows. Absolutely. And it's not that I go in and beat my chest and I am your boss, I am the captain. <laughs> it is like, dude, I totally know the engine room, so you can talk to me like I'm educated. Right. That's that's an interesting point, and I know that there's that's one of the hurdles. Are there any, have you found any assets to being a woman? Assets are, yes, of course. I think women are, in my opinion, are more patient. We're, we tolerate more, <laughs> which I think is great because a lot of people like myself needed someone to tolerate me, <laughs> you know, and to, to invest in me and to say I'm worth the, right. their effort. Because there's so many people out there that just don't have that self-esteem or that confidence level and to be able to build that up and to have this opportunity as a captain, yeah. to me is, it's worth it. So some of these episodes, I, I watch the, just the craziest things happening and your demeanor never changes. You are calm, collected, you know, you might drop a swear word every once in a while, but who doesn't? But the way you manage the crew and let them make mistakes and use it as a teaching moment is just brilliant. So, you know, obviously bigger boats, to most people, their crew is their family, and you're trying to co you know, coordinate with your son or daughter when docking. And like, what kind of advice would you give to the average person who's you know docking a 37 foot Sea Ray or you know working with their family? I even as a captain today, I stop, I breathe, I take a breath. Yeah, I always take a breath, so I have to switch from one station to the next. I think about my approach. Mm -hmm. I think about my escape. I promise you every time. Approach I think and escape, I like it. I think about that. So if my approach isn't going to work, where's my escape? So always have that plan. There are some places that you go into where there is no escape. <laughs> so you, it's like, 
I was teaching someone how to ski. And I said, you have to turn down the mountain to turn. And that's the scariest part. It's getting mentally, psychologically, mm -hmm. getting past that fear of what if. Just stay with what is. And that's what I do. So for example, one day we were filming and I remember we had to go into Monaco. Now Monaco, I hadn't, you know, it was, we were filming, it was in October. What cruise ships are in Monaco in October? I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I didn't think of a cruise ship be sitting on the wall. Well, the Monaco uh -huh. Harbor is very, it's not so wide when you have a cruise ship there. Right. Especially when you're coming in on a following sea and the following sea is the sea that picks up the boat and pushes it. Mm -hmm. So you have really very little control. As I was coming in, we're filming. I have to get into this marina because it's part of our job. So I look at the first officer and I said, he knew exactly what I was talking about. I go, I'm gonna make a wide turn and I'm gonna come in. And he goes, that's a great idea. So I needed that little bit <laughs> of great idea from him because I was really nervous about this approach. So as I'm coming in and the boat's being lifted up and pushed, you, this girl was standing behind me, uh, one of the producers, and she was going, <sighs> Oh, breathing it out. So I'm thinking, is she breathing for me or is she breathing for her? But she saw what I saw. So she was breathing for her because she saw and my and if you look at the footage, my hands on the throttles like this and my wheels turning. And all I kept doing was where I am. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got through the channel, I thought to my there was no escape. No, like, there was no escape. I had to go through. Well, as I hit, I thought if I hit the wall, I kill them because uh, the production's on the main deck. Oh, geez. Like, but if I hit the cruise ship, I just hurt them because these, this is how a captain thinks. So I went for the cruise ship. So I stayed closer. You'll see the bow. Like I actually have that footage where she took it from behind my shoulder. Oh my like, goodness. You see the boat go like this and like this and like this, but I'm steering and I'm steering because a following sea, you don't have control unless you can go faster than the sea. But when you're coming into a harbor, you cannot. Guess what pulls in front of me right as I make it? No. About seven-year-old kids <gasps> on lasers. Oh no. About seven of them right across my bow. So then you see my hand go like this, full throttle. So the boat cavitates because your, your props are oh, yeah. told to go the other way and it's just catching the air as we bounce back. That was my, you know, I did not have an escape. I had to commit. Mm -hmm. This is the moral to the story. And I, I committed, so I committed and I, and I, I stayed focused. I did not freak. I right. just stayed focused. And I think that's really the message is plan, plan your approach, plan your escape. But if there's no escape, stay committed to your approach. And that's really, and just know you that's can That's intense. Do like my heart rate is kind of like, yeah. even just hearing that it story. It was intense for me too. And I went for ice cream after that because I needed <laughs> just to chill out literally yeah, and totally. figuratively. <laughs> well, I'd like to hear like a learning moment where you let somebody well, I think take for over. Crew, um, what I, when you see me allow people drive the boat yes. or take it off the dock, I do it for two reasons. The main reason is when I see them start spiraling is to keep them engaged. You don't just have to clean toilets or you don't just have to work on deck. Just know there's a bigger picture here. Right. So when they take it off the dock, they go, whoa. Because they they feel confident because I'm standing right behind them. Mm -hmm. And the other part is, for me, is they get to feel how important communication is. Absolutely. When they don't hear the guy on the back calling it or the guy on the bow, they're like, well, where am I? So that is critical. Mm -hmm. Communication and boating, communication in life is Makes Amen. it or breaks it. And so, and it has to be clear and concise. So now they get to hear their job. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I like putting the first officer, the person talking to me at the helm. So they understand what you have what to do. What I them. need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great teaching moment. And I think that's a great kind of segue into the classes here and, and what Marine Max does. Because we have the classes, when you, when you get a boat, we go through it from, from bow to stern, any question you have. And it's easy like when it's sitting on the trailer and you're like, okay, I get it. But once you get it in the water and you're actually docking or you're actually having to maneuver the dual joysticks, you know, it's a little different. And you have your delivery captain's number and you go, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. You have that person in your back pocket that can talk you off the ledge and just go breathe, breathe, breathe. And 
figure it out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so kind of switching gears, you've been on countless boats your entire life. The Sea Ray 370 Sundancer outboard. I, did you love, get a chance to love, look love. at it? What yeah. are some of your favorite features? I went on the sea trial. I love the headroom downstairs. Mm -hmm. I think it's really great that some, a person at six feet tall could actually yeah. stand up down there. I don't know, what is the headroom? It, it's Kelly, are you standing? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that to me was great. I love that the shower was separate from the bathroom. It wasn't yes. an all in one. You don't know you need that until you need the that. The cabin, <laughs> I also felt like those see-through stairs, the floating stair, it allowed that not to feel so claustrophobic right. and you had windows in there, which is really great. So to me, the interior was incredible. And for a lot of people, they like that. It's like the cabin cruiser, weekender, overnight. You can go to the Bahamas. You don't have to rent a hotel room. You yeah. can stay the night. I loved how smooth it was. I also love that you don't have a step where you step up to. It's something that you, it's a gradual. Mm -hmm. So no one has to trip anymore getting to the bow. That's so cool. Genius. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, and, engineers. <laughs> and it's a level ride. The, the trim tabs, I believe they're automatic. Um, mm -hmm. And I never felt like I was walking up a hill. As you're, Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Absolutely. The boat and the way the boat handled. I also agree when you have that joystick, it's really important to know how to dock a boat without a joystick. And I loved Captain Keith's class because I think that he was very thorough mm -hmm. and he's, you know, he covers a lot. And I, for me, it's about women on water. We need more women on water. Just know that you can do this. Communication is important. Um, the Sea Ray product is, Phenomenal. you know, so user-friendly. I mean, right. it is incredible. So I want a woman to be go, to say to all her friends, come on, let's go for a day on the, you know, on the intracoastal and go restaurant hopping. Yeah. Not bar hopping. Somebody has restaurant to stay sober. Hopping. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got to designate your sober skipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keith will talk all about that yeah. too. All right. So that's a uh, beautiful boat where uh, all the ladies here on Women on Water are getting a chance to do the sea trial and they're practicing their docking and, you know, just getting a little bit more comfortable with that. So what's next for Captain Sandy? What's next? Well, I am going to Jacksonville after this to celebrate a birthday party. Yay. I am got my hands on a little bit of everything. I'm trying to raise money for my Ocean Rangers because I want kids to, I was that kid that just wasn't college material. And I want, I never heard there were maritime jobs when I was in grade school. I didn't yeah, know that was an option. They don't talk about it really. No, and I want, so I created these cast of characters and they are uh, for second to fourth grade, and I have to raise the money for that to get it into schools for oh, 2021. That's excellent. So yeah. it's Ocean Rangers. Captain it's Sandy's Ocean Rangers. Captain Sandy's Ocean Rangers. All right, we might need to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to write that down because we're, we might have to look into that. Yeah, I'll send you the ca characters because I hired a writer. I actually have an in school program that's ready to go. Um, excellent. Yeah, and it's, uh, it teaches boating 101. Uh, watery wonders. Yeah. So you learn geographical locations and the body of water. You also learn what is extinction because obviously we got a problem with some fish. Yep. Yep. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, because I actually like to eat fish. I'm just saying, but you know, <laughs> got to keep it going. Yeah. Got to keep this life cycle going. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. I did. I. I didn't know about Ocean Rangers, so I will I will definitely look into that. And I highly suggest everybody out there also, um, if people want to know more about you or follow you on social media, where can they find you? Yeah, on Twitter, Captain Sandy Twitter, Captain Sandy on Instagram, and same thing on Facebook. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's been a joy. I really do want to hear more stories, but yeah. I know that we have a lot of things to do today, yes. so we're going to wrap it up. Um, any other final thoughts or? No, I just love what you're doing here. I think, you know, as a whole, like Marie Max is doing such a great job. I, you know, obviously for our business, 2020, for a lot of people was terrible, but for the maritime industry, I think people were like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that college fund and I'm just going to go buy a boat because mm -hmm. it kind of felt like Armageddon. And the cool thing is when you're on a boat, you, you're isolated. You can mm -hmm. have as many people as you want or as little people as you want. Yep. And you guys have provided that. And the, the women on water is incredible. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, this has been a joy. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the, the notes section. We'll make sure San Captain Sandy gets them. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Awesome, thank you. All right, thanks guys. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.